Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I will be talking about the Azure Service Principle and the Managed Identity main difference. Alright, this is sometimes confusing for us even if you are a starter or uh, in the middle of uh, learning phase, you know, sometimes it will get confused. So I will talk about this main difference in terms of scope life cycle and purpose for these two important concepts so this video is going to be useful for your azure and interview and uh, without delay come let's get started all right so we we wanted to see the difference of the service principle and the managed identity in terms of three things right the first thing is a scope so for the scope under the service principle what you need to understand is Basically, server principles are Azure Active Directory's identities, okay, that represents the application services or automation task. They can be scoped to specific Azure resources or group or individual resources. So basically, service principle is kind of a representation for a particular Azure service. And then they also can be scoped to, uh, to, to any level like subscription, resource group or individual resources. And now coming back to the managed identity in terms of scope. So managed identities are identities assigned to Azure resources such as anything like virtual machines, functions, app service or anything. And they are scoped to the life cycle of the Azure resource itself. They are associated with and inherit the permission based on the resource configuration, right? So that's the main difference. Managed identity is nothing but they, they, they live and you know go away within the resource itself if the resource has a particular uh, limit they also have a particular limit okay so because they are tied up with the resource itself not like the service principle service principle are different managed identity is different now coming back to the life cycle for these two concepts right service principles have a separate life cycle from the Azure resources all right so they don't just go away like that they need to be created explicitly and their credentials like client secret or certificate they need to be managed and rotated periodically for security purposes the minimum recommendation is uh, you know 180 days which is six months but periodically you know the admin will rotate the key so that it is uh, you know it is always secured and it is not uh, compromised all right so they are not tied up with the resource that's what you need to understand and then coming back to the managed identity for the life cycle like I said, managed identity are within that resource itself, right? They represent that particular resource. So if the resource go away, this also will go away. If you delete, remove the resource, this also will be removed. Okay, so that's how it is. We don't need to do any explicit work. It is managed um, automatically by the Azure and it is all going away. Now, the purpose of these two things, that's, that's something that you need to understand. So service principles are typically used to authenticate applications services or script to access the Azure resource program. I'll explain you in a bit. They are commonly used in scenarios where the application needs to authenticate and access Azure resources independently, uh, uh, you know, other than the user. So a, a good example for the service principle is, it's a real-time example, okay? So you have, uh, you're working on a company, you are on a project. Now, the companies, all the projects are, uh, you know, hosted on cl cloud, which is Azure. So now the good example is, let's say your application has a CI-CD pipeline and in the CI-CD pipeline, it, it wants to access a key vault or something to retrieve some information, okay? And then put that into the application configuration. Now, in order to achieve this, this is automation, right? CI-CD is automation. So you will create a service principle that will have access to a particular resource and you use that service principle in the CI CD pipeline to access the resource. That's the most important commonly used scenarios. That's why this is what is exactly, uh, you know, explained in this, um, in this uh, service principle for the purpose. Now the life cycle, in terms of life cycle for the managed identity, like I said, they are one to one with the resources. So managed identity are used to authenticate Azure resources themselves when accessing the other Azure resources or the external services. They provide a secure way to uh, authenticate the Azure resources and then without needing any credentials, right? So rather the credentials are like exposed. Okay, uh, we saw in the key vault demo, right? You have a web app, you enable the managed identity of that web app, which will be eventually given permissions in the key vault uh, access policy. And that's it. This, this, can, this is more than enough for the app to uh, talk to the Keyword. 
right that's how you use the manage entity all right a lot of document references kept it here you can go and find more videos on my channel and uh, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and this is uh, also important concepts in terms of azure preparation either it is for az204 certification or 104 certification or even for your interview sections all right so if you like this video do subscribe to my channel share this with your friends if you have any questions do write me in the comment section and i'll see you in the next interesting video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!